Hi everyone, welcome to Good Knits by SK. I'm Sherry and this is podcast number five. So I am currently filming on a Sunday because the weather here in Amsterdam has officially turned to fall and it has been so dark and gray and rainy and windy the last week. Uh, so there hasn't been really any good days to film and then with it getting dark, uh, I'm finding it quite challenging. Um, I also uh, haven't been doing a ton of knitting because I noticed that since starting this podcast, I was getting a little bit obsessive about all my free time needing to go towards knitting so that I had content to share so that I could be filming episodes more often. Uh, which honestly was kind of taking the fun out of it. So the last couple weeks I have really tried to prioritize um, trying new things, getting out with my husband on the weekends, and just making sure that I'm not just sitting on the couch and knitting for days on end. So it's actually been a really busy couple weeks. Uh, I mentioned in my last episode that we went and did a ceramics class. So I believe the name is Kesame Design here in Amsterdam in the center. Uh, she did a bring a friend ceramics class, so it was hand sculpting. Uh, we went a couple weeks ago and you could literally make whatever you wanted. So my husband made a um, kind of boxy vase and I of course decided to make a yarn bowl because uh, they're quite expensive to buy and it seemed like the perfect opportunity to try to make that for myself. I unfortunately don't have the real yarn bowl yet. Um, it is done, but I haven't had a chance to stop by and get it. So I'll insert a picture of where it's at right now, but I'm really hoping it will look a little bit nicer when I get the final version. Uh, I don't love my paint job that I did, but it's my first time doing it, so that's okay. I did also just really enjoy the ceramics class. Um, it was so relaxing to do something new and just like flex a new creative muscle. So I think it's definitely something that we're gonna try again, um, maybe on the wheel next time, see how that goes. I did find some classes here in Amsterdam. Uh, or maybe we'll just go back to Kesame Design again. She also has a, um, I think it was called ceramic weaving course where you really like make long um, strands of yarn and put them together uh, and I think that could be really cool just to do something different. We also went and saw Tig Notaro, so the comedian I mentioned. Uh, amazing show, it was packed, she's so funny. If you guys get a chance to go see her, you definitely should. Um, what else have we been up to? Oh yeah, last weekend we went to The Hague to visit some friends, so it's about an hour and a half outside of Amsterdam. Uh, and since we were going over there for dinner, we decided to just make a long weekend of it and spend the night. The weather, unfortunately, it was really windy. It kind of sucked. So we didn't go up until later in the day. Um, I literally took one picture from that trip, so I don't even have footage to share of it. Uh, but we really enjoyed ourselves. It was nice to go to our friend's place for dinner. We played games. Um, and then my husband and I just went for a drink um, near a hotel at the end and then came back on the Sunday. Uh, unfortunately, we forgot about the marathon that was happening in Amsterdam last weekend, so getting around once we got back was quite difficult because we don't have a car, so we're very reliant on public transportation. So when things are happening in the city and your trams aren't running, uh, it can be a bit of a pain in the ass. And then finally, uh, the other thing that we've been up to is it was my husband's birthday on Friday, so we took the day off. Uh, but leading up to that, it was also the kickoff of Amsterdam dance events, so ADE here in the city. It happens annually around this time. Uh, so Wednesday, we went and saw Tin Liquor with the Metropole Orchestra here in Amsterdam at Melkveig, and amazing opener, really, really cool. Uh, they were doing a ton of filming of it, so I imagine at some point it will be up on YouTube because usually those opener shows are. Uh, and then Friday for his birthday, he dragged me out to um, 
Loveland, which didn't even start until midnight. <laughs> so really had to pump myself up for that one. Um, but once we got out of the house and over there, it was quite fun. So we went to see Hot Since 82 primarily, but all the DJs were great. Um, However, I think that is my last late night event for quite a while. Uh, we've done a few of them this year, also with Ibiza for my birthday and our friends visiting. And I'm just ready to go back into full on hibernation granny mode and go to bed at a decent hour because I hate having my next day completely as a write off because you get to bed so late and then get up late. So that's a bit of a life update. Definitely tons happening right now. Um, it's been nice to stay busy. We are also looking for more things that we can do as couples. And then I think, like I said, we'll sign up for another ceramics class. And we're just looking to see if there's anything else that we uh, wanna do together in Amsterdam. And especially for fall and winter, uh, it can be a bit easy to get stuck in the house. So it's nice to get out. Before we dive into the knitting, so I recently filmed a Every Sweater I Ever Made video, uh, which I posted about a week and a half ago. Uh, which has had really good feedback. Uh, I really enjoyed making that. Um, one thing that was really clear from it, so I had commented that this uh, weekend slipover v-neck from Petite Knit was something that I didn't really wear that often. I wasn't that happy with it. And people had very strong opinions about that uh, in the best way possible. So everybody was really kind and said they didn't understand why I didn't like it. Uh, which I get. The uh, outfit I wore to take the video was like a white short sleeve summer t-shirt, but because of the weight of this yarn, I don't tend to wear it in the summer. So this is more typically what I would wear it with, which is just like a long sleeve shirt. And I think my issue with it is maybe the long sleeve shirt is just a, a bit too tight. So I think what I'm gonna do is get some uh, slightly looser fitting long sleeve shirts and then see how those pair together. And maybe wearing this over dresses or skirts would be good because I do get it, it is a cute top. I think um, even after filming the B-roll video because I did the audio before I filmed the B-roll. And so I also kind of remembered after a few reasons why like I didn't like certain sweaters or maybe also realized myself like with this one that I was being a bit too harsh on it. Uh, but for example, with the eyelet yoke sweater, the first one I made, also the novice sweater, I realized during the B-roll, a big reason I don't wear them is I made the sleeves too short and then the eyelet, I made the body way too long. So yeah, <laughs> it was interesting filming that one, really fun to see kind of everything that I've made. Um, but I definitely learned some lessons uh, on that one after filming uh, for content that I probably should have included in the video. Okay, um, so let's dive into the knitting because that's really what you're all here for, not my life updates. Um, I don't have anything finished because like I said, I have been trying not to just obsessively knit and I've also realized that I just have way too many projects on the go right now because I'm feeling some pressure with going back to Canada uh, next month and trying to have a few pieces done for that because it's just very expensive to ship stuff there. So it's easier if I finish it ahead of time so I can bring it with me for friends and family. But that means that I am currently working on, I think, five or six different projects, which typically I only have about two or three on the go at a time. And so I'm finding it really difficult to put my focus to any one thing. And you will also see from the patterns I'm working on that I tend to be doing just a lot of really complicated projects at the moment. I don't have a single stockinette thing on my needles. So therefore, when I do sit down to knit, I really have to dedicate focus and time to what I'm doing or it's very easy to make mistakes, which I have done and had to fix. Um, so that's also preventing me from moving a bit quickly. So where I'm gonna start actually, um, because I also have a bit of a request for people. So I mentioned in my last episode, podcast episode, that I was working on the Emile beanie um, for my niece in Canada. Um, she was apparently in her pink phase, so I was going to make this for her. Uh, it's a kind of cable-y hat. And then I send her mom the pictures just to see, oh, does she like the style of it or does she prefer something else? 
And apparently she is now out of her pink phase and she now wants a beige hat of all things, which I'll show that yarn in a second. So thankfully I didn't get that far with this because she now no longer wants this hat, but it also means that I only kept this petite, or sorry, this We Are Knitters Mary Wool uh, this long to make her a hat. That's the only reason that I have it in my stash. So um, I have two balls of this. Uh, so there it is. And I have no use for it. So if anybody is watching this and is interested in this neon pink and you want to buy it from me or do a trade maybe even, um, let me know because I would be open to that. I want to make sure that it goes to somebody that will actually get use out of it because I really don't see myself making a hat out of this and with only two balls there's not a ton that I can do. So I would love for it to go to a good home. Uh, and if I get some new yarn out of it that I can use, then great. Otherwise, yeah, uh, somebody can buy it from me. Uh, let's talk. So leave me a comment or send me an email. Um, my email is in my profile or you can send me a DM on Instagram. So this project is now being frogged, but it will get a new life in a new yarn um, very shortly. And I am looking forward to making the pattern because it's uh, quite interesting and different for me. It's nice to make something other than petite knit. So that will be on my needles very shortly. So the next two projects um, are things that are quite similar actually. So I already showed a little bit of the progress on my Salty Days uh, sweater last time, but this is where I'm currently at. So this is by Veronica Lindbergh or Kudo Vakika, I believe. Um, sorry, I should have double checked that. Um, so this is about two weeks of work now, and this is one of the most addictive knits that I've ever worked on. Um, it's very, very interesting and intricate. So you start with the back panel here and then you pick up at the shoulders, you work down, then you join um, in the front and then work down and then join the body. So this one has been pretty easy actually. Uh, there was just one moment where I missed a yarn over and so I was off a stitch and I decided, even though it probably wasn't a huge deal just because this is a pattern, I didn't want to have to fuss with that later so I decided to rip back and start that little bit over. Thankfully it was only, I think, a few rows into here. So I just had to rip back about four rows and start over. It was about an hour of work that wasn't too bad. Um, I am also using the um, Durerum Natura Gilead yarn, which I do really like the yarn as a whole. Um, and actually, let me just tell you what it is. Um, so it's 100% wool. It's the Goland yarn in colorway. I have no idea. Oh. 390301, it's uh, whatever their heathered gray is. Um, and it's 100 grams for 250 meters. So this is quite a substantial bowl. And I do like the yarn itself. However, I am finding that for this particular sweater, we'll see how it blocks out. It's feeling a little bit stiff. Um, so the original yarns that she calls for, I believe are Double Sunday or um, I think Pier Gint help with a mohair. And so it has a little bit more of a drapey uh, look to it in the pictures but I really didn't want to hold it with a mohair in this case. I have a lot of sweaters with mohair. It's not my favorite. Uh, so I really just wanted this to be a yarn held single, which the pattern did call for a DK weight yarn. But if you actually look at the yarn that was held with the mohair, it was already DK. So it's really more of a worsted weight that you need for this one. And so I did get gauge after doing a couple swatches. I decided to go with just the five millimeter needles that were called for. Um, and yeah, I think overall I was expecting maybe the pattern 
wouldn't show up that well with this yarn because it's a little bit heathered. I think it's been okay. But like I said, it is a little bit stiff. I felt my swatch and I think maybe it'll be okay. Um, it did soften up a little bit, but I am hoping when I actually wear this that it will drape a little bit more. Um, I probably should try this on at some point too. So maybe what I will do is um, put it on some barber cords and insert some B-roll for this before I, uh, or so that I can insert it during my edit, uh, because also I haven't seen how this looks on and I think it's a pretty good size. Uh, I'm knitting the size small. I think it will be okay. But overall, loving the pattern. Um, this one is also really nice because if it's your first uh, textured sweater, which it's not mine, but if it is yours, uh, Veronica has a video posted on YouTube that is an entire tutorial for this. So also I just started on the left and right um, cable crosses and I watched the video just to double check that I was doing those correctly. Um, so it's, this section in the pattern. Uh, so really helpful to have that video tutorial to go along with. I think that's quite common from what I've seen for her pattern. She tends to always have a corresponding video. So that's really nice, especially if you're not that confident of a knitter yet, or you just need a little bit of help to make sure that you're doing the exact stitch. Also means you don't have to do a bunch of searching on YouTube yourself for it. You know exactly that that is what the designer intended. So this is definitely a great first pattern uh, if you're doing a textured sweater. And I'm really excited to have this in my wardrobe. Uh, but the funny thing is, the next one that I'm working on is the <laughs> Storm Sweater Junior. Uh, so I'm making this for my nephew, um, so my brother's baby in Canada and it's his birthday in November and I will be there at the end of the month. So this is essentially his birthday gift. And if you saw um, my very first podcast uh, back in August, so I had originally made him the Ingrid sweater baby, uh, but then I was worried because this was nine to 12 months that it actually wouldn't fit him by the time I get home because he'll be a year old. So I decided I would just make him a new sweater Everybody said the Ingrid actually looked quite big, so it would probably be fine for him. Um, but I decided to take it as an excuse to just make another sweater. And similar to the Ingrid, this is one that I was maybe interested in for myself. So trying it in a junior version made sense because I could see how I like it. But the funny thing with making this at the same time as the Salty Day sweater, oh, and this is by Petite Knit, by the way, um, they're so similar in color and like overall kind of, um, well, uh, overall texture that I picked this up yesterday to work on it and literally was reading the Salty Day sweater pattern, went and got my cable needle out so that I could start doing the pattern, um, like the cable pattern for the Salty Days, and then realized I am looking at completely the wrong sweater pattern. Uh, so yeah, I think working on both of these at the same time, I would not recommend because it can be very confusing. Uh, but this, especially because there is like no real complicated texture in it, it's literally knits and pearls just done in slightly different patterns throughout. It's so addictive and it's going so fast. I started it last week, so this is a week's worth and I uh, only have nine centimeters left in the body. Granted, it's the size one to two, so of course it's going quite fast, um, but yeah, I think I worked on this for three days total for like half a day each and I'm just breezing through it and I actually wasn't that interested in this pattern hugely for myself, but now having um, made this one, I'm coming around to maybe making the adult version. Um, I was pretty proud of myself for this one because on the front it's pretty much, well it is error free. But I realized when I was working on the front panel yesterday that 
I completely read the back chart pattern incorrectly. So it had been a while since I really worked on a proper chart. And what ended up happening is I forgot that on right side, you read right to left and on wrong side, you read left to right in the chart. And so what ended up happening is I read it the wrong way. And you can see that top bit before I joined in the round um, definitely has the wrong pattern. And I remember thinking that as I was going, I'm like, mm, that doesn't really look like anything, but I'm just going to trust the process and surely that will end up looking and feeling like something that resembles the final pattern. Uh, and it won't, but because it's on the back and because it's for my nephew and he will outgrow it quite quickly, I'm not going to bother fixing it. Um, I did on the salty days because I knew that would drive me crazy, but on this one, it's fine. He won't notice and I don't even think his parents will really notice. So I think this one, I may actually finish the body today. And then I know the sleeves will go quite quickly because they did on the Ingrid. And I will say, um, you know, on the Ingrid, this was definitely a more complex pattern because you have to do the actual cable crosses. And I found that really difficult to follow. I made so many mistakes on this one. Um, and overall, I just find that this pattern looks a little bit more traditional. Um, whereas the Storm sweater, I don't know, it's just a little bit more modern. Um, and I just really like that the texture is made up of knits and pearls. So I am also, uh, for those that don't remember, making this in the Drops um, Extra Fine, Merino Extra Fine mix, which is super wash. I wanted to make sure that they would be able to put it in the washing machine and hang it to dry so it's easy care. And this is 100% wool and 50 grams for 105 meters. So I think I had five balls of it. Um, and I'm honestly seeing how far this is a ball and a half. I don't even know if I'll use up all those. I imagine I might have a ball left of it at the end. So those are the two projects that have actually been dominating the majority of my time the last couple of weeks because, uh, well, this, I have a deadline. I just want to get it off my needles. The salty days, I also just really want to wear and I'm enjoying making it. But that means the blouse number two from my favorite things knitwear that I've been showing the last couple of videos. I did make a tiny bit of progress on it, but not enough that's worth showing. I think I did five rows since you last saw it. So it's really not worth bringing it out and talking about it again for the, I think, third time in a video or fourth time. But there is progress on it. However, because it is also a um, textured pattern, it's just taking up too much brain space for me. I, I don't have the energy for it right now. I need to get one of these other projects off my needles and then I'll come back to it. Um, so yeah, that one has kind of been put by the wayside for now. But since I do need some kind of mindless, mindless uh, knit project, um, if you saw my very first episode, you will know that I had been working on the cardigan number four from my favorite things knitwear. Um, so here it is. And I had been talking about potentially frogging it and everybody similar to the slipover uh, had a lot of opinions about that. They really felt that I should continue after seeing it on in that video and seeing how far I had come. I didn't really have a lot of work left on the first sleeve and then it's really just finishing the second sleeve. I decided to keep going with it, um, but I hadn't, I hadn't picked it up for months and months and months. So because I needed a fairly mindless project, I decided this would be that for now because even though it's half fisherman's rib, um, working it in the round is not that complicated. It's a round of the um, knit one below and purl one and then you purl a whole, whole round and that's it. You just keep repeating that. So it's pretty easy to work on in the dark. It's on six millimeter needles so it moves quite quickly. 
So I did about half of the um, remaining part of the sleeve. So I'm getting close to where I can just finish off the rib. And I think this is one that within another month or so I will have done. I had said that I would take it to knit nights, but honestly with the weather and work being busy, uh, I have not had the energy to go the half an hour to the library in Amsterdam to go to knit night. I used to live a lot closer, but earlier this year we moved. So I just haven't been there. Um, I do need to get back to it because I honestly really miss knit nights. Um, knitting is a little bit of an isolating hobby right now, but I also need to be a bit mindful of where I'm at in life right now. And at the moment, I just can't add another thing. So I haven't been. Uh, so it's fine. This is my couch project right now. It's my evening easy knit um, and yeah Almost done the sleeve so I am growing more and more excited to actually have this in my wardrobe now Especially now that I finished my cardi jumper from Burtnet, uh, which is a very similar color. Oh, I'm tangled Also, it's just a really interesting yarn. So I am using the Ladybug yarn, hand dyed mohair in mist. So it's a very like purple, pink, gray um, hand dye, and then paired with a uh, knitting for olive soft silk mohair. One is putty, which is the same as my cardi jumper, and the other is pearl gray. So these three together. Um, yeah, I think they look quite nice. It is definitely, it would be too difficult of a project to frog and I think I'll wear it at least at home. The other thing I would love to get opinions on for my cardigan number four is if you guys think I should add buttons or not. I have seen a lot of versions on Ravelry without. I kind of like that it just hangs open. Um, but I also like the pattern photos where she does have the buttons. I just wonder if I would actually use them. So curious to know with your thoughts with um, my version of it, if you think I should add buttons or not. And then if you have any suggestions for buttons that you think would lurk, uh, ugh, <laughs> buttons that you think would work well on that one. A final project um, that I have on the go, uh, which is maybe also one of my more mindless knits right now is just my second ooh, uh, Sunday sock. So I showed you the finish one last time. Um, I am just gonna finish off this uh, rib tube probably maybe even today. And then I know the rest of the sock will go quite quickly. So this pair is gonna be for me. And then I will show you in a second what I'm gonna make for my husband. And this is just the Filcolana Peruvian Highland wool in camel that I had left over from my slipover. Um, also, does anybody else just use random bags that you get for clothing. I got this with a pair of shoes um, and then I have one from a purse. Actually, I think two from a purse. I've never bought a proper knitting project bag. Am I the only one? Um, these are just so perfect and they're cheap. Uh, I also have a ton of tote bags from my old company because they would do a tote bag a season. So I always throw my sweater projects in there. That brings me to uh, my acquisitions, which I have actually bought a little bit of yarn. Um, so I will start with the yarn that I've chosen to replace the We Are Knitters Petite Wool for my niece's Emile Beanie. So I ended up going with the Lang Merino 70 in beige because Apparently she's like a little grandma now and she wants beige, which is a shame since she's 10. I was hoping to work with a slightly brighter color, but this is what she's requested. So I'm gonna go with that so she actually wears it. Uh, I've never actually worked with a Lang yarn before, so I am curious. This is Merino Extra Fine Superwash uh, in the color 7330022, but I think it was just called light beige. And it's 50 grams per 70 meters, so I got two balls um, for her hat. It definitely doesn't feel as soft as the We Are Knitters Merry Wool, 
um, but I think it will actually work better for this specific pattern because it is textured. So I think this will actually hold that pattern a little bit better. So maybe it's for the best. And if this yarn works out because it, uh, I forget how much it was. I think it was like six euros or something per ball. If this works out, I think I will buy the same one because her mom also mentioned wanting the same hat. Uh, so I just, I didn't want to buy it all in one go and then be unhappy with it. So yeah, um, that will be that. And then I also bought um, new to me yarn. So I've used a lot of Sadness Garn in the past, but I've never worked with Perfect. So this is in Petrol. And the camera's actually picking the color up pretty well. So this is for a pair of Sunday socks for my husband. He saw mine and really wanted his own. Um, so when I'm done my pair, this will kind of be my next small mindless knit project to carry around. Uh, so hopefully I will have these done in a couple weeks for him. Uh, my goal is at the very latest Christmas, but I think I can achieve it before then, but the Canada gift knits are gonna be the priority. Um, the reason I went with Perfect for his socks versus the Peruvian Highland wool that I used is because this is super wash and therefore it can go into the washing machine, which I knew there was no chance that he was going to hand wash his socks. Uh, this is 80% wool, 20% nylon, and it is 50 grams per 100 meters. So I got three balls so that I can make him um, the taller version of the socks like he wanted because his feet are slightly longer than mine uh, or larger than mine uh, whereas I only needed um, two balls and then I decided at the same time to buy another colorway of it I believe this is mm, oh, I forget the exact color The color is 9071, but I want to say it was like dusty green or something. Sorry, I I don't know why I can't remember it. I, it was a last minute decision. I originally had a different color uh, in my cart, but decided to switch. And the intent being maybe this would become another pair of Sunday socks, so I'm kind of over the pattern. So I think I'm just going to look at DK weight socks uh, on Ravelry and pick something, but also if you guys have recommendations for DK weight socks that would work for this yarn, let me know. Um, I haven't really done any research yet, so I have no idea what I would pick. But yeah, it's nice to have cozy socks. I wear them a lot at home, especially with my slippers. Uh, so yeah, can't hurt to have too many. Uh, worst case, yeah, maybe they become another gift knit. So that's everything that I have to share today. Um, I hopefully will have a few finished projects by the next time I film in a couple weeks. Uh, I do think I'm making quite good progress on my textured sweaters. And then once those are done, I would really like to cast on my cami number no. nine from my favorite things knitwear. Uh, I have the yarn for that I have for a while. It's in my fall knitting plans, but I didn't want to cast on yet another project, even though it is stockinette, but I just need to get a few things off my plate. Um, I'm also currently planning my yarn buy for when I go to Canada. So thank you so much for all the great recommendations last time. There was a few new to me yarns that I think I'm going to give a try. Uh, in addition to making a knit picks order. So I expect I will come back with quite a lot of yarn from that uh, for a few of the projects like the movement sweater and um, maybe one of the cardigans I have. Uh, I also am becoming really obsessed with seeing people's uh, Noro Madeira Sake cardigans lately. So I know High Fiber Knits has one that she did, I forget the exact pattern, um, but that sort of is what spurred the interest for me. But then I was also watching a new podcast to me last week, which is String Things by Mel. Um, she's also Canadian, really good podcast, uh, so recommend checking her out. But she did a version of the Champagne Cardigan, which is, I think, more the direction that I would take. 
So I'm having a really tough time finding that yarn here in Europe, so I'm going to see if maybe I can locate it in Canada and order it there if it's not too expensive. But I just am really stuck in my head now that I really want this yarn. So I'm going to see if I can try to find it somewhere so that I can make a cardigan out of it because I think it'd be just a really nice layering piece and add a bit of visual interest. So we will see how far I get in the next couple weeks, um, but I really appreciate you spending time with me and thank you so much for all the comments and likes on my videos. Um, I officially broke a thousand after my last video, so uh, it just means a lot that people seem to care what I have to say about knitting and you're showing up and engaging. Um, so thank you so much for that and I will see you next time. Mm -hmm.